a very warm welcome back to Tony Northeastern and here we are again another episode of building the Tyne Dock Station and um, there's a something going on here oh Sid's found the keys by the way the dog had swallowed them so had to wait a couple of days for him to get the keys back but in the meantime, don't those flowers look lovely? I think they've had a good watering over the last few days. Anyway, this is what we're going to start on next. The second building. Um, hopefully Sid will have his office and the ladies will have somewhere to go. We've got the cubicles but obviously we need to put the walls on. So without further ado we are cracking. Ah but before we do uh, I'd like to give a shout out to Barra. Um, he's just put up his first video um, on YouTube. Um, uh, it is on my community page or you can go directly to Barra's channel. So Barra well done mate. And I wish you all the best and get some more videos up so we can have a, a really good look at your layout. Right, it's over to the bench. And here we are, we're back at the bench. And here's the original drawing I did a few weeks back. Um, it's slightly longer than the other building. Uh, I think that was 240, this is 310. Um, that's to include an extra room so as you can see we've got the waiting room ladies station master and booking office there's a slight change to the booking office I'm putting in a narrow window there um, just just to, to change the, the pattern and all that it, it's nice to have some station advertisements on the building as well which I didn't plan for um, if you noticed I've only got one measurement and that's for the waiting room. Uh, the ladies is 60 millimeters. Uh, the station master office has got a nice big office, 80 millimeters. And we've got the booking hall, which or the booking office, which is 70 millimeters. You notice we have three chimneys here, so that chimney would keep the um, waiting room nice and warm. That one, station master's office, and this one, the booking office. And here we are. We've already pre-marked them. All I've got to do now is cut them out uh, in the same way as I did for the other building. So here we go. We've got the doors and windows pre-marked and it should be a mirror image to what we've got here. Notice the narrow window. People ask me... Um, why do I use two mil card instead of one mil card for the walls? Um, the reason why I use two mil card is that we can push the windows further into the the card and get a little bit of a return edge, a little bit of a, a brick edge, and uh, that's the only reason why I use the two mil card. I mean. You can use one mil card, um, but then you put the windows flush with the brickwork and you don't get that edge. Um, yeah, it is tougher to cut this two mil card, but I think it works out a lot better um, aesthetically wise when you look at the finished product. While I'm waiting for the brick paper to dry on the card, I thought I'd show you what I'm going to do next, which is the ticket office. Um, what I like about this is the different contrasts between the stone and the brick. Now, obviously, this is in a station where you've got loads of room, and um, all I'll be taking from this is the three windows. This little um, dividing stand here for the for the tickets um, and also the, the corners and all this area here 
and this is what I've drawn. So this is the end wall. So I'll cut out these three windows and hopefully it'll match up with these three windows. So what I'm doing here is I'm not going to use the, the windows that's on the photograph so I'll just scribe some stonework there and uh, we'll use these three openings. I'm going to make some plastic strip corners to go in that area and that area. Uh, I'll cut out this so that gives us a little bit more depth uh, when this is stuck to the card. Um, so yeah, so that's what I'll do next. I've cut a slight chamfer on this 1.5 quarter round to, to look like the stonework is sloping away. Um, so I've already stuck one piece on and this piece will just go underneath the lettering just about here. And um, the contact adhesive I'm using will stick the plastic to the card. Basically what it's doing, it's actually melting the plastic. I'm just going to put it on that line there. And I shall leave that to go off. Basically, I'm just trying to 3D image this onto here. Then it's just a case of cutting all this out and then sticking it to the side wall. So that's the quarter round done. So what I'm going to use now, I'm going to use the 1mm round to go underneath. And that will give us the appearance that we have a radius underneath the quarter round just like that so it will look as if though we're forming a cornice. Now I'm just going to add some 1mm round to glue underneath this 1.5 quarter round and that will give us the cornice effect that I'm looking for but we still need to cut a slight angle onto this one mil round and make sure we put it in the same plane so that's just about there so I'm quite happy with that and we'll just mark that there with a pencil so I know I've got to cut it in that Try not to let the quarter round turn. And then we'll just glue that into there. And that will be the cornice effect that I'm looking for. And I think that will work. Now we move on to the counter, as it were. Uh, it's all on these windows here. Um, so I measured it to be the same width as the two cornices, which is uh, 61 millimeters. And as you can see, I've put that line there. And what I'm doing now is I'm just marking where the window apertures are. Here and here. Now the idea is here is I've got a 2 mil line and a 1 mil line. So the 2 mil line comes to about there, then we move it out and then bring it back in and move it out, bring it back in to make the three openings on the counter like we have here. And it's hard to see with a top view of this to see what it looks like on the top. Um, and then these, these here would then come out a little bit and then go back in again so it forms sort of uh, an order here for queuing I'm sure that's what they're for something like that all right I'll have to measure it and mark it out um, 
to get it more accurate. But this is just a rough guide of, of how I'm going to do this. And this is what I have come up with. Um, as you can see, um, these are the three windows. One, two, three. And this just separates the window apertures into queues. And if I just put that in front of the windows, you get a full perspective of what it looks like. I've drawn the lines again um, and I've ditched this watch washer, the original washer, and I've used this washer, this 4 mil washer. And what I've done is where the centre of the windows are, I've drawn the half circles there first and then on that 10 millimetre line, which is two foot out, I've done the radius that way and I've linked them up and uh, that looks a lot better than that so we'll ditch that that's gone in the bin and what I'll do is I'll tidy this up get it looking a lot neater and then we'll cut this out and stick this to the fascia front at last I think I've got what I'm looking for um, I've just added some super glue around the edges um, to harden off the edges so I can then sand them and uh, get the shape that I'm looking for and uh, yeah and then once that's done I can then glue this to the that ledge line there to form the, the counter just added some 110 grit sandpaper around this handle of my file and I'm just sanding the edges now to get the radius that I'm looking for Obviously you've got to pinch the card as close to the edge as possible so you don't um, buckle it. Yeah, so all I'm doing now is just cleaning up the edges and getting the shape that I want. I've now added a uh, 1.5 quarter round underneath the uh, counter as it were stuck to uh, the back card as you can see there and uh, I've cut the windows ready and um, so this is almost ready to be glued onto the the wall now then uh, regarding the wall I've cut the apertures and the brick sheet off completely to allow the stonework on this fascia to go around the edges uh, into the windows themselves like so and uh, that now is almost ready to be glued on I have now painted the fascia in Saturn 196 and I'm just adding the, the stones what I'm doing I'm just putting the crevices in with this blade every three and a half mil just so that it looks like the stones there uh, I never pre-marked this but I think it's probably better to mark it afterwards after it's been painted and that way the paint doesn't fill in the uh, grooves in the stonework So I'm just pressing ever so lightly, not too heavy. And then that then should bring out the detail of the stonework there on the top corners. And I've just got to do the same with the lower corners. And I've just got to tidy it up a little bit. Now that I've painted the lettering in gold um, it really does make the ticket office kind of pop um, especially with the swirls as well either side um, I've added a couple of pieces of toothpicks I was just waiting for that uh, super glue to go off just making sure it's still square with the walls and it's just flat with the base of the building so it shouldn't really 
knock it in anyway. Um, so now it's time to paint the, the counter and I'm using a matte uh, 63 and then what I'll do is I'll go over the top of it with some varnish once the matte paint is dry. that this is looking at the moment. I have now painted the supporting legs on the counter uh, in the customary blue and I've just highlighted the base with a little bit of satin black. So to finish off the countertop I'm just going to give it a gloss coat uh, just to finish off the, the counter. And uh, you've probably noticed I've reddest the counter a little bit more, give the edges a bit more of a, a radius. Uh, once this is done, there's only one thing left to do, and that's to highlight the stonework um, to bring out the, the stones. I will use a little bit of weathering powder, I think just to highlight the stonework on this um, fascia. While you've been watching me put the fascia together, the other Tony has been working on putting the windows and doors into the walls. Um, so we're almost at the stage of putting this together. There's a few more little odds and ends to do before we can assemble the whole building. So let's go over to the platform and see how this is all going to fit in. With those four walls just sitting there on the platform it really is beginning to look like a station. So let's have a quick recap. Like I said earlier, while you guys were watching me put this fascia together, uh, the other Tony was in the background was putting the doors and windows in, and uh, which is a bit time consuming. And I didn't want to really film that again because you've seen me do that so many times. Um, yeah. So. Um, yeah, like I said, it, it's not glued together yet because there's still more work to do to these walls before I actually glue them together. Um, for instance, the the ticket office on the inside, I want to put the, the um, panelling and shelving on the opposite side of the counter uh, before I glue them together. Make sure I get the two counters, the, the counter inside and the counter outside level because um, it would be a bit tricky to do it if all the walls were assembled. But yeah, um, putting that against the photograph, uh, there is some similarities. I mean, I have taken the best parts of that photograph and uh, used it for this build. And um, it does seem to work. And here's what it looks like from the other side. And I think when we start running trains up and down the main line, and I think we'll get, we'll get some great running shots of this station. Right, I think that's all from me. Uh, I hope you enjoyed what you've seen. And um, we'll see you again soon. Bye for now. Bye.